In the beginning was the word. And the word was... The most legendary first-person shooter. I don't really know what other word to use to describe this god sense game. The game that is truly a sensation in the gaming industry. The project that not only has its name written in history, but the one that brought together tens of millions of fans around the world, many of whom work on game modes to this day. Thanks to John Carmack and John Romero, this, that's not an exaggeration, phenomenon was brought to the world. These Genesis were the masterminds behind another legendary game, Doom, which was not only a masterpiece, but also a real technological revolution. And they didn't stop at that. Hey everyone, this is Nightclub Play, and today, oh, what a journey awaits you today! This isn't your average gameplay review, no, this is a whole ass opportunity to get nostalgic and get to experience perhaps one of the most famous first person shooter series. John Carmack and John Romero were greedy for fame after their first creation, so they decided to make another project. That project was not as impactful but it was no less legendary. Get comfortable in your stroke seat for some innocent mechanical operations on your body. Today we are discussing the evolution of the Quake series. <laughs> Carmack and Romero nursed the Quake project in their clever hands for a long time. Together they wanted to create something innovative, but at the same time cool enough to surpass their previous creation. Our story starts in 1994, when the whole id Software stuff was puzzling over what their next game would be. Instead of the Doom guy, the developers had some dude in the draft that looked suspiciously like Thor. Instead of a shotgun, there was a regeneration ring. And instead of a shooter, it could've been an RPG. Yes, guys, you got it all right. Originally, id Software wanted to stay away from their usual shooters and try their hands at RPGs. They thought, if they couldn't make history with that one, at least they would make some impact. They just didn't know how to impress the players. Romero was screaming about dark fantasy with heroes, American Magee was going on about Aztec's history, about sci-fi, and an axe circling around the player, and Carmack was freaking out about everything and just wanted to add several characters with different abilities to the open world. So, it Software spends a whole year while discussing the future concepts, when suddenly realizes that the planned release is in half a year only. The axe around the player is still not spinning, the rest of the ideas are still questionable, and the staff is starting to get into fights with each other. In the end, after sitting down and discussing everything again, the developers make a final decision. They choose everything that doesn't contradict, but decide to make a game in the genre which they excel in. First-person shooter with a great emphasis on interesting level designs and addictive gameplay with monster speeds. But if you want to create a really addictive game, you can't do this without a quality soundtrack. No need to worry, this aspect of the game was also on another level. The famous band Nine Inch Nails wrote really ominous and menacing music, that's perfectly contributed to the gaming experience. A few weeks before their release, its software teased the players with the multiplayer-only version of the game, so that the fans could give some feedback in time for the game's release. To say the least, the players literally lost their minds from what they have experienced. Quake had simply brown the gamers' minds, they got addicted to the death much. No one even dared to doubt the project's success, but Carmack and his team decided to fuck everything up with their own hands. Before the sale launched, the developers decided to release another free demo version with only a few available single-player levels. The rest had to be bought through the phone. But less than a week later, the hackers did their job and started distributing the game via the internet for free, depriving its software of the lion's share of the profits. But profit is a long forgotten thing. It was more important the Quake was almost the first three-dimensional first-person shooter. The levels were loaded instantly, enemies overflowing, the bombs making them a bloody gory mess. It was a real technological revolution. In Quake, the player took on the role of a survived stormtrooper, who was sent to another dimension by the governments to prevent a disaster and destroy the main evil. And that's all. If you're waiting for a huge plot, reduce your expectations to zero. The same thing was with the Doom series. It didn't really sweat over the plot, so it's secure for us to start talking about the gameplay. At first glance, everything is just as usual. Here's a level, here's a set of weapons for you. 
go and destroy everybody without any questions. However, this time the main feature is the visual design. The player could travel through huge medieval castles, fight knights, zombies, demons and other demonic things. And the Nine Inch Nails soundtrack with its howling sounds only fuels public interest in the game. Running through the levels and slaying the enemies left and right was as fun as in Doom, but then you could feel the same depressive atmosphere, that feeling of loneliness when everyone is against you and there is no end to this chaos. The multiplayer mod is god tier. Yeah baby, thanks to the full 3D engine, the developers have created such cool maps for gory battles that are still excitedly used by the old fans. So, Quake was the new It's Girl of the 90s, which immediately changed Doom in the battle for the genre fans' hearts. And it still doesn't lose its relevance, the multiplayer still has working servers, which confirms the immortality of the project. It's only a pity that despite such success, the situation in its software was the opposite. Romero and Karma got into endless arguments over their differences. Because of that, Romero had to leave the company for good. He developed his own shooter, Dai Katana, but it flopped among the fans of the genre. Initially, the second part of the already legendary game was to become a stand-alone project, but it didn't work out. So, the project received a prefix soon. However, it had little to do with the first part of the series. Its software decided to ditch the original ideas and completely jump into science fiction. According to the lore, the Earth's government found out that they were going to be attacked by an alien race of strokes. In an attempt to find some way out of this little disturbance, it was decided to attack first. So, the troops were sent to the alien's home planet. And as you may have guessed, it all went a little shitty. Out of the entire party, only our protagonist, whose name is Bitterman, survives. Now he's on his own in this battle against strong powerful army. Nothing is left of the old atmosphere. No creatures from the pits of hell, no knights in armor. You have to fight all kinds of cyborgs and genetic mutants. Yeah guys, to my humble opinion, the second part turns out even better. I hope the fans of the original are not throwing rotten tomatoes at me in the comment section. Judge for yourself. Here you have a great sci-fi setting. The map is enormous and not confined by the castle mazes. The graphics has changed beyond recognition and dazzles the players with bright colors. The gameplay didn't change much though. The developers have purposefully slowed down the overall pace of the game allowing the ordinary noobs to complete with multiplayer daddies. The guns have changed too, in favor of sci-fi. The cherry on top, of course, is the legendary BFG 10,000, which blows up the brains of everyone who gets in your way. Of course, no one was going to give up the multiplayer mods, but first let me tell you how the single-player mods has become much more interest with new features. To move the plot forward, you'll have to complete different tasks on each level. Also, you'll get to watch some curious clips between missions to take a little break before going into a battle. For those who love to explore every corner of the game, congrats! There's an opportunity to return to the previous level and find something that you might have missed earlier. Talking about the multiplayer, well, the developers have taken the basis of the previous experience, performed some rituals over it, added new play and things, and introduced a very action-packed mod where you could get into nasty battles with your friends. But sadly, the public wasn't really appreciative of that part. The gamers and the critics were skeptical about all the new features, although they acknowledged some innovative solutions. However, the true legend of the Quake series awaits us ahead. Everybody is familiar with this one, Quake 3, the game which in fact started the era of regular world championships. What's the deal with this one? Well, first of the developers got rid of the single player, lore and all that shit. Quake 3 Arena was a project focused strictly on the multiplayer mod. Don't get me wrong, there was a still a single-player mod with some bots, but it was rather a warm-up before the real demolition mission of your loser friends with their railgun. Finally, realizing that the vast majority of fans is hot and bothered for the multiplayer, he just went with it and released something truly awaited. The developers devoted all their time to balancing maps and weapons. The gamers could compete on locations where special power-ups, such as squad damage, regeneration or different armors, 
popped up at certain times. Impressive. The thing about the game was that the ones who knew the map better made better use of the portals for high-speed movements, scored more and won the match. But at the same time, speedy movements and good aim were not enough. It was an important skill to know the timing of the power-up appearances, because you had to get ahead of your opponent and dress up better than them. Therefore, during the pro games there were often situations that the players had to get into brutal fights to get the long-awaited armor. Thus, every match the player had to think of a strategy to move efficiently and protect the key objects. This made the gameplay more exciting and far from boring. It was a different story for the newcomers, the pace and the gameplay wasn't really suitable for them. Those who had played the first two parts were quite familiar with the mechanics and started to bully the noobs during the matches with their thought-through tactics and smart use of weapons. After memorizing all the maps and time of power-up appearances better than the multiplication table, only then you got a taste of that sweet competitiveness you had never experienced before. With time you were leveling up your skills and finally became the one to orgasm after punishing several noobs in the game. That's no secret that Quake 3 set the world standards for multiplayer shooters around the world. Modern teenagers believe that the world didn't exist before Dota 2 or CSGO, but we know that a huge number of events dedicated to the game were held and the champions were literal idols for the millions of players. The prizes funds often reached hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nobody was doubting the relevance of eSports. The new add-on Team Arena was released in 2000 with new features, but the players were not fond of them and went on with the old version. The game turned out to be so popular that in 2010 the developers decided to release Quake Live, which works through the internet browser. Not so difficult, just open and play. It was like a real social network. Each player had a profile and used it to communicate with friends and follow all news of the Quake world. There are still tournaments going on here and there, and the community with the developers don't sit around doing nothing. They come up with different kinds of updates for players from time to time. But back to the vanilla Thor's parts. After the crazy success, the developers had another dilemma. Should they release something for the eSports or try something new? Well, the fans had to wait for 5 years to get the answer. Ranger. The gamers were confused, to say the least. Quake 4 is probably the most controversial serious rebirth. The most peculiar thing is that the players knew almost nothing about the production of these parts. It was only known that it handed the baton to Raven Software and everything changed. This part was a sequel of the Quake 2. The developers focused more on the single-player campaign. After Bitterman's victory over the Strock forces, the humans began a full-scale invasion of the Strock's planet. The player had to take on the role of an ordinary marine and destroy the Strokes absolute ruler in the final mission. There were more cutscenes in the game, the plots became important and the number of characters was approaching a dozen. At times, the game could pleasantly surprise in the style of Half-Life. Just remember the stratification POV. You experienced the cutting off of the limbs and their replacements. Ah, <sighs> Makes your blood run cold. <laughs> But obviously, none of this was what the fans had been waiting for. First of all, the pace of the fights decreased greatly, and most of the time the players had to chill in confined dark corridors. The game looked more like Doom 3. Secondly, obliterated trips on turrets and tanks appeared, as well as various interactions with NPCs, but it wasn't popular with the fans. And finally, the multiplayer. Because of the decreased speed of the single player, the multiplayer lost its adrenaline pace and couldn't surprise the gamers. Of course, the game was still good, but the players expected some cool innovations when they saw the name Quake. All they got was just an average shooter. The opinions were divided. Everybody praised the single player mods but couldn't say anything nice about the multiplayer. The sales, compared to the previous releases, were average. And the overall impression was mostly negative rather than positive. The fans wanted something more canon-oriented, but the developers thought otherwise, and two years later released something that only vaguely resembled the original. 
As it turned out later, this pass didn't last long as enemy territory, a team shooter inspired by the Battlefield series, was released in 2007. It was delivered by Splash Game Studio. And let me tell you right away, the game was super good for its time. There were maps, a lot of equipment, emphasis on taxis in battle and other interesting features. Together, all of these aspects made a really great project, but no one had any use for it. The fans of the original trilogy were waiting for something else, and the Battlefield audience didn't care about the new project from the Quake team. Nevertheless, there are things worthy of our attention. Each of the sites has five classes and they differ a lot from each other. For example, a human medic has health packs and defibrillator packs in his arsenal and can airdrop different supplies. And the technician has capsules and a lazarator, with which he can turn the corpses of other strokes into mobile spawn points. Also, an honorary mention goes to the Mega Texture technology. All objects in the game are huge high-resolution texture. These methods allowed for large open locations to be rendered without losing efficiency, as the computer only processed them up once. Despite the good gameplay, as I mentioned earlier, the game wasn't accepted with open arms, so the developers had to make a tough decision to put the game on hold. Finally, in 2016, at the E3 conference, its hardware announced a long-awaited sequel with the subtitle Champions. The players were slightly dumbfounded, but at the same time skeptical about the project. Champions gameplay reminded them the good old Brutal Quake 3 with the wild, mind-blowing game rhythm. But for some unknown reason, the developers added active and passive character abilities. What the fuck? The new Quake is not about map control, but about some kind of… old? The skepticism faded real quick though. When the game was early accessed a year later, everyone was pleasantly surprised. Your character is not just a skin in the multiplayer, it's a unique character with its own advantages and disadvantages. Also, the developers added the most popular maps from the entire series, the most balanced guns, added some pleasant features like the ability to keep a gun in the middle of the screen, like in the first game, and topped it all with the best graphics of that time. But most importantly, it's the same sort parts, but with a character system. However, these additions to the game are more like toppings than main cooking ingredients. The basis of the gameplay is the same, fast movements, knowledge of power-ups whereabouts and competence choice of weapons. Therefore, the purpose of all those innovations is to diversify the concept that many people are accustomed to. If your skills are lame, even the most powerful old ability won't help you. There are still cool tournaments held for champions, but lately the game is being talked about less and less. Almost zero new content and there are no plays of an official release. It's disappointing how we seem to have an excellent resurrection of Quake for esports, but in fact, the publishers have no idea how to attract new audience. Of course, new people are still coming, but I wish it was millions of them. So here is a short shooter history course for you all. Once, Quake had every chance to become the most popular shooter in the world and overcome the legendary Doom, but an endless series of experiments and then the illiterate actions of the publishers made Quake a quickly forgettable game that was needed by the old fans only. And yet, Quake is a phenomenon in the game industry, you can't deny that, it's a series which in all its 26-year-old history at only relevant concepts, except for enemy territory. The original trilogy is still played by tens of thousands of people, but these are the 90s kids who literally grew up with Quake and don't want to live without it. Now there are rumors on the internet about another reboot of the series. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that the new game will be interesting to both new and old generation of players. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope I was able to make you feel nostalgic or just got you acquainted with the new project, Champions. Please give us your precious likes, click the subscription button and don't forget to share stories of how you got wild with your friends in Quake. So, until next time, see you then.